Whether you are designing a discrete or an integrated circuit, the task is sufficiently complicated that the assistance of a computer can range from being merely helpful to being absolutely essential. And it's for this reason that a wide range of uh, circuit analysis packages has been developed. However, even though a circuit analysis package may be very powerful numerically, designers often find these packages rather difficult to use. The natural language of the circuit designer is the circuit diagram and the plot of circuit response. And it would be very helpful if when the designer calls uh, on the computer for assistance, he could work in terms of this natural language. It's for that reason that the MINI system uh, for computer-aided circuit design was developed. And throughout this presentation, I shall be illustrating uh, this system by looking at various capabilities that it offers the circuit designer. The system itself is implemented on a large mini computer and the circuit designer interacts with the system um, partly through the keyboard, though not very often, and mainly through the visual display uh, by means of a light pen. He uses the light pen to uh, draw his circuit diagram and to issue commands to the computer. Here we have a current source of value 1 ampere down to earth. Connected to that we have a resistor of value 100 ohms again connected to earth. In parallel we have a capacitor of value 3.9 nanofarads down to earth. That feeds into a transistor whose orientation can be altered by means of these arrows, but in fact we want it in the common emitter connection and when we continue drawing, the arrows disappear. We need a resistor followed by a, another resistor down to earth. And across this bottom resistor, we have a bypass capacitor to provide uh, a low impedance path uh, for signals. And finally, we have a resistive load connected to earth. If the um, circuit gets too large to draw within the area that you see here, we have a, a zooming option so that we can bring the paper edge uh, to this position to see a large circuit. Similarly, we can zoom out. And to enable us to draw a large circuit, we can, if we wish, move the circuit around the screen. But the words paper edge always tell us the boundary. So let's move that circuit back. And now see if, the, if we've assigned values to all the components. If we look at values, we find that these components have not yet been assigned values, so I can choose, for example, 100 ohms for that resistor, 1 kilo ohm for the load resistance, 560 ohms for this resistor, and for example, uh, 27 microfarads for the bypass capacitor. The transistor must be assigned a type number, which I enter on the keyboard. It 
The type number appears in this box and I assign it to the transistor symbol simply by pointing to the transistor. So we have defined a circuit complete with values that we wish to analyze. Occasionally the designer will wish to calculate the value of a component. Uh, conventionally he would use um, perhaps a pocket calculator but in the mini system, such a calculator is provided on the screen. Uh, after calculating the value of a component, it can be assigned very simply uh, with the light pen. Well, we've seen there how easy it is for the designer to draw his circuit diagram and to assign values to the different circuit components. What I'd like to do now is go back to the mini system to look at uh, a new circuit which is perhaps better uh, designed to show the capabilities of the mini system. Two-stage amplifier with a um, source represented by a current generator, a resistance and capacitance. Uh, we've assigned values both to the components and we've assigned type numbers to the uh, transistors. So let us now cancel the action of circuit definition by pointing to the circuit definition light button. By default the computer assigns input and output nodes at the places where we happen to want them and all I have to do at this point is to call for a circuit analysis. The computer having, chose, having chosen by default again the limits of the frequency range. So I point the light pen at this graph paper like light button. The clock tells me two things. First of all that something is happening. In other words the computer has heard my request. Uh, secondly it gives me some feeling for how long the analysis will take because when the hand comes to the upright position I will then be presented with the computed response of that circuit. It may be the case that I want to extend the frequency range in which case I simply point to the upper frequency in the menu and then indicate that I want a ten times extension. It may also be the case that I don't want to go down uh, as much in frequency, in which case I simply position a new lower limit for the frequency range. If I then ask for a new plot, again, I know that the computer has received my request. If I've asked for something ridiculous, I can always point at stop, in which case the calculation will be halted but I can easily ask it to start again by cancelling the stop. Okay, here's the <coughs> response over a new frequency range and we can see the uh, fall off in a voltage gain due to the capacitance within the transistors. Now it may well be that our circuit has a nominal response which is acceptable but we all know that components have tolerances and therefore it would be very useful to the designer to know the effect on the voltage gain of our circuit of a small change in every component in that circuit taken separately and to know that effect at a number of frequencies in the range of interest. It is possible to carry out such a calculation very efficiently and we see this being done on our uh, design circuit on the display. We indicate the sensitivity not by numbers but by circles. A large circle means that the voltage gain is very sensitive to that component. This is so that at a glance the designer can immediately see which the sensitive components are in the circuit. That is at one frequency. If I now um, move through the frequency range of interest, 
then the sensitivities will change in magnitude over that range. So I can easily spot components that are sensitive at low frequencies, for example, when these two capacitors have large circles associated with them. I think you'll appreciate that the idea in that display was to indicate uh, effects which are large by large symbols and effects which are small by small symbols. There is no need in certain circumstances to provide the designer with numbers if he is just looking for orders of magnitude. That display of sensitivity circles can also be very valuable when searching for resonance within a circuit, as we see in the following uh, example. On the right-hand side of that circuit, there is a resonant circuit, and resonance is indicated by those two circles suddenly uh, flashing together. We can explore manually along the frequency range to identify that resonant frequency. Now, it may well be that the response uh, exhibited by our circuit is not entirely to our liking. For example, the low frequency response may not be acceptable. We perhaps want the voltage gain to stay constant down to lower frequencies. Now, the display of sensitivity circles indicated that the emitter bypass capacitor had a large effect at those low frequencies. So it's very reasonable for me to ask, as the designer, what would happen if I changed that capacitor value? Or, more to the point, to what value should I change it if I wish to have an acceptable low frequency response? Again, uh, a very efficient algorithm exists for computing that effect, and in the next sequence, we see the designer exploiting his ability to examine dynamically the effect of changing a single component. I'm asked to choose the component. Let's choose this one here. The computer carries out a calculation which I'm happy to wait for, even though it takes uh, half a minute in this case, because when the calculation is finished, I can vary the value of that capacitor and immediately see its effect. I vary the capacitor by means of uh, a light pen on this light potentiometer and immediately I can see that capacitor value affecting the low frequency behavior of the uh, amplifier. If I wish, I can have this new value assigned to the capacitor by simply pointing the light pen at a command update the circuit, whereupon that new capacitor value is assigned to the capacitor. Now, previously we looked at the effect on the voltage gain of a small change in each component taken separately. But of course, in a real circuit, uh, the components will undergo simultaneous changes due to the tolerances, and we would like to have some idea of the effect on the overall voltage gain. The dotted line is the nominal response. The full lines indicate the maximum and minimum values. Now, although that last calculation gave us an idea of the worst uh, performance of our circuit, it may well be that we're prepared to throw away some of our manufactured circuits. So what we would like to do is to carry out a statistical analysis of our circuit in which we describe the uh, probability density distributions for our tolerance components and then have a look at the distribution of the voltage gain of our circuit. So what I would like to do is to specify that certain uh, components uh, have tolerances and to ask the computer to indicate the resulting uh, 
uh, spread in the voltage gain of this circuit at a frequency of one kilohertz. I want to see the nature of the probability density distribution of the voltage gain. And I'm presented, first of all, with this dotted cumulative distribution from which I could easily compute the yield of that circuit. And here is a frequency histogram. Up to now, we've been looking at a diagram on the display and calling it our circuit. But of course, it's only a model of the actual circuit, and we may well have forgotten various parasitic capacitances that will exist in the circuit when it is manufactured. It would be very nice if the computer uh, was able to draw our attention to parasitic capacitances that might be um, bad for our circuit in the sense that um, the parasitic capacitance would cause the voltage gain to go outside tolerance. As it happens, we have um, a fairly efficient algorithm that will compute the effect of parasitic capacitances on the voltage gain and by drawing them on the circuit diagram, draw our attention to those parasitic capacitances that we might have forgotten to include in our circuit model. I can ask the computer to calculate the effect of a capacitance of one picofarad, as indicated in this box, uh, connected between every node pair in this circuit, simply by pointing to this uh, button. The object of carrying out this calculation is to enable the computer to draw my attention to any stray capacitance of one picofarad which would cause more than a certain allowed deviation in the overall voltage gain of the circuit. In that way, uh, my attention as a designer is drawn to possibly hazardous parasitic capacitances. And we see there that for a tolerance of just 2 dB on the voltage gain, the computer has indicated that a capacitor between these points and another capacitor between these points would cause an unacceptable deviation in the voltage gain. Sometimes the circuit model may be more complex than is justified by the tolerance that we're prepared to accept on the calculation of the voltage gain of the circuit. We might wish to take uh, a model of the transistor in our circuit and say to the computer, tell me if any of the components in this model are redundant in the sense that I can remove them by replacing them with an open or short circuit and still be able to predict the voltage gain within the accuracy that I require. It is certainly possible to do this as we will see in the next uh, sequence. What I've done here is to replace the second transistor by its equivalent circuit model. And what I would like to ask is, do I need such a complex model? Can I replace any of these components by a short circuit or open circuit and still have the uh, overall behavior, that's the voltage gain of this circuit, predicted with acceptable accuracy. In other words, we're looking at the trade-off here between model accuracy and computing time. What I do is simply to ask for the model simplification uh, option, or pessimization as we call it here. We're trying to find the worst possible model. Um, I indicate those model components, such as the base resistance, R pi, C pi, C mu, R mu, R naught, the output resistance, uh, some emitter lead inductance, and some collector emitter uh, capacitance. Those are the candidates for removal. I ask the computer to look at the effect of replacing each one of those by a short 
or open circuit and that is what it's doing now and after a first look at the effect of these components it tells me that that, that resistance, the output resistance, can be removed without causing an unacceptable uh, error in the calculation of the voltage gain between input and output. It has now indicated that that uh, CPI capacitor can also be removed. The calculation that you see there is repeated um, over and over again until no more components are found to be redundant. I've now been told that the base resistance can be shorted out and still not lead to unacceptable error in the calculation of voltage gain. And for that particular tolerance on the voltage gain, these are the only elements that can be removed from this equivalent circuit of the transistor. Up to now, we have been using the computer to compute the voltage gain of our circuit over a specific frequency range. Now, if one designs a computer-aided design system, such as the one we're now looking at, it is almost certain that the first designer who comes through the door to use it will not want to look at voltage gain. He might, for example, be a designer of simulated inductors, in which case he will want to have computed the inductance seen looking in at an input terminal, for example. So it's absolutely essential for a computer-aided design system to have the flexibility to allow the designer to define his own circuit properties of interest. This is possible in the mini system by simply typing in on a keyboard uh, a mathematical expression for the property of interest. We go to the circuit properties option and we ask to see a statement or an expression for each of the properties that is available in the menu on the right hand side. Now I want to replace one of these properties for this new designer who wants to look at the equivalent input inductance. So we say that we're going to redefine option number three. I can then type in an expression in an APL-like notation which tells us that LEQ, that's the equivalent input inductance is the imaginary part of the input voltage divided by 2 times pi times the frequency. That is the new expression for the property of interest. So we simply hit the carriage return and it replaces option number three and LEQ appears as one of the choices in this menu. So in fact we can point to LEQ in the menu and we can ask for a plot of that property versus frequency and it is instantly available. Here we have used the APL notation and programming language to introduce useful flexibility in the mini system. And in fact, the APL language is being used now quite frequently by design engineers in industry to enable them to ask a very wide range of questions about the properties of the circuit that they are designing. This voltage gain response curve may not be exactly what the designer is looking for. He would like to be able to specify to the computer the response curve that he wants and have the computer alter the component values to try and achieve that curve. That is possible in this system. We simply call the optimization 
facility, we choose the components that we are happy to have varied in order to achieve the response curve that we want. We then draw the desired response curve by means of the light pen. After having drawn the desired response curve, we can now say how important it is that we achieve certain sections of this curve by specifying weights. So if I specify that the weight at this frequency is very high, that means I attach a great importance to achieving this particular part of the curve. So here is a uh, curve which indicates the importance I assign to getting this curve uh, as closely as possible. We now leave the rest to the computer by looking at the effect of those variable components on the voltage gain it is able systematically to change those components in order to improve the response. Here is the response that we want here is the current value of the response curve. What is shown here is the discrepancy between what we want and what we've achieved. There was a very great discrepancy at first, now the discrepancy is much less. And in the next stage of this optimization procedure, we get a continuing fall in the discrepancy between the two curves. Here we see the new curve that we have compared with the desired curve. It is generally felt that the correct way to use optimization is interactively so that the designer can alter the details of the desired response, um, he can alter the weighting that is put on various frequency ranges so that he can alter the uh, components that are chosen to be variable. And it would also be very nice if he could alter the algorithm being used to carry out the optimization. We are free to go back to the circuit diagram and choose different components to be those that we would uh, wish the computer to vary. We could also, if we wished, uh, go back to the response curve plot and assign a different um, importance to s certain uh, frequencies. If it was a little bit more important to get this mid-band gain correctly, then we would simply reduce the importance associated with the upper and lower frequencies. So let us now go back to the circuit and see how the optimization proceeds. In fact, we now see the mid-band gain approaching the desired gain more closely. The discrepancy continues to go down. The aim of this presentation is not to sell you a piece of equipment or some software, but rather to expose you to concepts that I feel are important if computer-aided design is to achieve its potential for assisting in the design of economic and reliable circuits. Uh, throughout this presentation, there have been perhaps two main themes. One has been that uh, design involves a considerable amount of change. Uh, one is always changing components in a circuit, and the components themselves are liable to change due, for example, to manufacturing tolerances. So it's important to have efficient means of computing the effect of those changes. The second main theme has concerned the man-computer dialogue 
involved in computer-aided design. It is essential to set up a good dialogue between the designer and the computer if the creative ability of the designer is to be used to the greatest effect and if the designer is to be allowed to concentrate on his circuit design rather than on the uh, complexities of controlling a computer.